So clickbaity title is pretty clickbaity and I wanted to start this all off by saying this isn't necessarily an attack or a criticism or anything along those lines. This is literally just me kind of working through some of the thoughts that I've had over the years about how one of my biggest influences and one of my, I guess, for lack of a better term, like idols when it comes to music criticism and music reviews here on YouTube approaches my favorite musical genre. Uh, yeah, we're talking about Anthony Fantano from The Needle Drop. Um, and for those of you that don't know who he is, like, I feel like you're living under a rock. Uh, he's like the biggest YouTube critic slash reviewer ever. You know, he's the one that really popularized and legitimized um, musical criticism here on YouTube. And he was one of my biggest influences. And really, it was the reason why I started my YouTube channel was because he wasn't talking about progressive rock. And when he did talk about progressive rock, it was always kind of painting it in a negative light. So I really wanted to champion and talk about my experiences within this genre and share music and really, you know, show the light on how amazing progressive rock could be. So, yeah, I want to take a little bit of a dive into, I guess, why he hates progressive rock so much. Another preface that I want to say is like, he can like what he wants and he cannot like what he wants as well. I'm not saying that he has to like it. And like one thing that I always admire and try to do myself is like, he is able to articulate why it is he doesn't enjoy certain sounds or certain genres or certain albums uh, in a way that always leads me to understand why. You know, it never leaves it ambiguous. It never leaves it in that sense of like, well, why didn't he like that? Like, he's always very articulate. And I always try to emulate that myself. I always try to give enough context and information on why it is that I'm feeling this way so that you, the viewer, understand why and how I came to that kind of conclusion. So I kind of like modeled it after that. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> over the years, uh, Fantano has left Prague in the wasteland uh, by choosing not to cover it and by only really kind of giving us little breadcrumbs along the ways. And whenever he does, it's always kind of in the negative light. And it's a shame because he has such an overarching reach that he does and he generally covers a lot of other styles of music and he's never one to shy away from strange or experimental or things that push the boundaries and I always wonder why he doesn't connect to Prague to the same extent that he does to artists and groups that do flirt with that style. I mean, you know, the album I've got behind me is a perfect example, um, but he doesn't even quite like embrace the progressive rock landscape and I also understand that there's a lot of music out there and nobody has enough time to listen to everything, right? And he picks and chooses what he wants to listen to based on what will work within the algorithm and what he wants to listen to. And for progressive rock, neither of those fit the category. So I kind of understand that, but when he does decide to cover it, you know, he's always kind of giving it a negative rap, you know? And, you know, the big one that I'm thinking of is his review of The Raven That Refused to Sing and even his response to his negative responses to it. Um it still kind of like showcases, okay, I understand why you don't like it. And I understand that, you know, it is quite derivative in that, you know, it's just 70s prog all over again. But for those that love that kind of music, maybe it's not so bad <laughs> in that case. Um, but also when he covers, you know, Stephen Wilson's Within the Hand Cannot Erase and, you know, giving the... Um, the Future Bites a not bad review, which I thought was kind of fun. Uh, but really, that's 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 about it in that sense. Um, like when I looked up his, um, you know, the prog tag on his website, the last entry was for the Glass Beach record back in January. And the one before that was April of 2023, which HMLT's album of the worm, another great album, by the way. Uh, but I think he's also doing a disservice within this specific framework within his website and within his like kind of categorization, because, you know, I'm a librarian and cataloging is part of my my repertoire by only, you know, servicing certain albums and and not applying it to others. Um, like I'm thinking of the new sound from Gordy Greep, which is behind me, um, Blood Incantations record of Absolute Everywhere or Absolute Elsewhere. 
it's obviously a prog record. Uh, and same with anything from King Giz within the past two or three years have all been very prog influenced, if not straight up prog records. And he's once again kind of leaving the prog landscape to the wayside and not really giving it the dues that I feel like it really deserves. And I do want to give him once again some credit because I don't want this just to be a call out. I do want to, you know, bring to light when he when he hits the nail on the head because he does cover the prog classics in his classic week. You know, he's done In the Court of the Crimson King. He's done Close to the Edge. But he hasn't quite covered some of those other big classics like anything from Emerson, Lake and Palmer, like Brain Salad Surgery or Tarkus. Uh, he hasn't done anything from Genesis, like Selling England by the Pound and Foxtrot. And I'm just, I'm, I'm confused as to why he's giving just enough lift service to showcase his interest in it and kind of showing how he's able to, you know, shed the light on some of these things, but also how he wants to almost actively ignore other aspects of it. And, okay, this is where I kind of want to dive a little bit deeper into this. It's when he does cover the prog, <laughs> the prog, uh, he always kinds of give it a bad rap. And I also want to say that he's very articulate and why he thinks this way. But, like, the last album I think that he did from Opeth was Tale Pale Communion, because I don't think he even covered Incatum Vinum. Um he kind of just writes it off as being derivative of its sources. And I mean, that's kind of a little bit of what prog is nowadays is showcasing the flavors, the techniques and the styles of seventies prog. And instead of that being a negative and more of a feature, I think he kind of misses the point of what prog is in this landscape because you have the, you know, the progressive rock and the prog that emulates that. And then you have the progressive rock and prog that pushes the music forward and challenges the listener into different ways. And like both are legitimate forces of prog. And in my mind, the best prog is when you marriage the two. I just feel as if he's only looking at the criticisms. And I mean, I'm guilty of this myself. You know, I will write off a band when they're overly derivative, you know, where they're not reinviting or revigorating or doing something different within the music. And they're basically just cutting and paste that I don't like. But I think he just sees taking influences and taking styles and techniques as being derivative and Again, I see where he's coming from because that is one of the, you know, weaker points within the prog, but that's also some of its strength, you know, and I, I think he misses the the immediate accessibility from the fan base of knowing what to expect when you come to an album. I mean, for very obvious reasons, he's never touched a Neil Morse record because at this point, if you've heard one Neil Morse record, you've pretty much heard them all, but there's this sense of familiarity. There's this sense of uh, engagement ship that you know what you're going to get into even before you drop the needle. And when you get something a little bit different, how that's surprising and how that's there's like this, this new discovery about it. But I mean... The breadth of difference between, say, a Sola Scriptura and one, <laughs> there's there's not too much. They have a lot more in common than they have in difference. Bringing this back to what he decides to cover. And again, I get that it's a combination of what drives the algorithm and his own interest. But the fact that he hasn't really even touched upon anything from Dream Theater, even though Dream Theater is arguably the biggest progressive metal band out there. You know, I would say that they're probably bigger than, say, a Mastodon or a Between the Buried and Me or, you know, some of these other, like in terms of like capital P prog bands, you know, and the fact that he's never even really talked about any of their albums, even though it revolutionized what progressive rock would be in the late 90s, early 2000s. I think it's doing a disservice to the genre. Same with other bands like uh, Devin Townsend. You know, the only time he's covered a Devin Townsend record is when he does the Why You Know review. And it's a very quick, very, you know, couple seconds. And that's essentially where most of these prog albums get relegated to. Like the last Porcupine Tree album was in one of those Why You Know review. Like the continue, like Closer Continuation was in there. And I would have liked to see a little bit more, but again... I'm also very conscious of his scheduling. You know, there's a lot of music out there. So I think bringing this all together, this isn't necessarily a call to action for Fantano. He's going to do what he's going to do. And I praise him once again for legitimizing YouTube review and criticisms within the musical landscape. He inspired so many that came after. And, 
you know, I think he, at the end of the day, is a net good within this, and I really want to applaud him of that. I just wish that he gave Progressive Rock more of a fair shake. I mean, I had the opportunity to meet him uh, about five, six years ago, and we had a discussion about Progressive Rock, and he admitted to me then that, yeah, he doesn't give Progressive Rock a lot of airtime. He wished that he could, but... You know, what are you going to do when you have to serve the algorithm and also feed your own interests? And he wishes that he had the time and that he had the interest in order to dive deeper into the prog landscape because of how vast it is. You know, like I would love to hear his take on Gaspacho. I would love to hear his take on IQ. You know, I would love to hear some of these deeper prog outlets be featured on his channel just so I can hear his thoughts on neo prog or contemporary prog or folk prog or uh, death metal extreme prog because I think out of all the genres those are the ones that he kind of touches upon more so within the experimental death metal prog landscape so that's kind of where I'm at within this. Um, I always used to think that it was good that he wasn't covering prog because then I get to step in and cover prog. But honestly, I'm learning more and more that the more people are talking about it, the more eyes are on it as a whole. You know, the more albums that I cover, the more that my friends' channels like Rhyme Signatures, Nathan on Shuffle, Similia to to Prog, um, Scott from the Prog Corner, you know, the more that they get recognized because they see my review and then they want to see other people's reviews of those records and generally it's share and share alike within our little community. And I wish if, you know, Fantano was doing that and bringing more eyes to the table of these artists and bands, then we would have that kind of cascading down. This is the only trickle down effect that actually works you know <laughs> so yeah that's kind of where my thoughts are within this um and i think i'm going to leave this with a, a a last thought that i find within the overall prog community people like to um kind of take the piss for the fantano and kind of use him as a a joke you know saying that he gave raven that refused to sing a bad review and because of that all of his opinions are invalid and i want to push back against that you know i really want to challenge that because people are allowed to like and dislike things all the time you know and what fantano brings to the table is uh extremely articulate well thought out well researched and well-produced critiques, reviews, and conversations around music as a whole. And just because he doesn't like the album that you like doesn't invalidate his opinion, just in the same way that if I don't like an album, it doesn't invalidate your opinion on the album, and your liking of an album that I don't like invalidates my opinion of not liking it. I think you just need to realize that he's just one voice that has a very large microphone, and you can either listen to him, or you can choose not to. But I wouldn't want to say or write off that his opinion doesn't matter. Because it does. He's got a very large microphone. But I want you to think more critically. Right? Like, I watch his reviews of albums that I'm interested in. Because I always know, based on what he says, whether or not I'm going to like an album. And that's something that I try to always emulate myself. You know, even if it's something that he doesn't like, he always structures it in a way to let me know if I'm going to enjoy it or not. Because there's a lot of albums that I have listened to based on his review. Even if he's given it a poor review, I will know based on what he's telling me if I'm going to like it. So that's kind of where I want to leave this off. It's a plead for him to do more prog, but it's also a plead for the prog community to not treat him like a, a, a meme or a... Uh, a joke or like that it's it's invalid right like if you don't want to watch him don't watch him uh he really doesn't need your views um he's got lots he's going to be fine but that's kind of where i'm going to leave that's where i'm going to leave it for right now this is just a little bit of a thought that i've been having in my brain lately um and yeah yeah i don't really do these kinds of videos so this might just be a one-off but who knows if I have another thought in my head that's kind of percolating in this kind of way that I think warrants a 
uh, review, I will. Um, I will also say if you are one of those individuals that wrote off Anthony Fantano entirely and doesn't want to listen to him because of how he's shit all over Prague, I would also recommend checking out Mark uh, over on Spectrum Pulse because he does cover quite a bit of Prague. Uh, we've done a couple of collaboration videos within the like Porcupine Tree and Stephen Wilson stuff because uh, we both connect on that. Uh, but he's also covered a lot of deeper Prague, like he covered uh, Bent Knee. And he's talked a lot about some really deep progressive metal stuff. So check out Mark's stuff. He's also extremely articulate, very brilliant, and very smart when it comes to media analysis and criticism. So that would be my plea. If you don't want to listen to Anthony Fantano, listen to Mark over at Spectrum Pulse. Um, and yeah, I think that's where I'm going to leave it. That's where I'm going to leave it. I've yammered on for a little bit, and that's where I'm just going to cut. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I guess let me know of your own thoughts about this. Um, do you love them? Do you hate them? <laughs> let me know all about that by commenting down below. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are taking care of yourselves. And I hope you guys will take just a couple minutes just for yourselves today. So yeah, yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time... Notes out.